name's Nick Harden. I'm Kim Harden. And these are our dogs, May and Pilot. They're two and eight. They just mean everything to us. Our dogs are our kids. Good girl. May is a wild woman, but she's a lover. She's super active, loves frisbee. Do your dirty dancing. May rules the farm. She's in charge of the orchard. She's in charge of the fish. She's in charge of the pond. We own and operate Kickstand Coffee and Kitchen in Hood River, Oregon. That day we were at work and talking about May and we decided to check in on them and something didn't look right. I called her name to the camera and she seemed super lethargic and just seemed hazy eyed and she was on the bed at the time just sleeping and uh, tried to stand up and more or less fell off the bed. She looked like she was trying to vomit. So Nick drove as fast as he could home while I stayed at our restaurant. The door to our bathroom was open, which we always keep closed. When I ran into the room, the bottles were out. The best thought for me was to go straight to our local vet. They stabilized her and basically sedated her because she was in one large seizure and muscle spasm. We needed to know what she took. She ate the bottle, she ate the label. Once we were able to get her temperature back down to a reasonable, they said, warm up your car. You're going Dove Lewis. They have a dialysis machine. We had asked our local vet, do you think we'll even make it to Portland? She said, on a wing and a prayer. It was a very... Um, Long drive. May showed up to Dove Lewis non-responsive, and she had a seizure pretty much right as soon as she arrived. I was very scared for her. She got into a large amount of a supplement called 5-HTP, and it acts as uh, serotonin. We knew from the initial poison control consultation that she had ingested over three times a dose that would be considered lethal to a dog. With toxin ingestions such as May, there is sometimes an option to do a dialysis style treatment where we can essentially remove the toxin directly from the blood and try to reduce the effects it has on the body. She was unable to breathe on her own. We actually had to put a breathing tube in her to keep her alive to just get her through the session. We were going into this treatment with actually quite a poor prognosis, meaning that we didn't expect her to survive no matter what we did. It felt like time was slipping away and she did not look good. I remember calling Kim around midnight and saying, she made it through the session, she can breathe on her own, but that's about all I can say. Later that day, Nick had the idea to bring some of her food. She stood up when we walked in and destroyed the whole bowl. I looked at Nick, I was like, this is our dog. When I came back in for my shift that evening, I was shocked. May was jumping on her nurse, taking treats. Um, she could see, I couldn't believe it was the same dog. We all cried, her nurse cried, I cried. And I can't believe that we sent her home like 48 hours after she came in. May's owners were very committed and wanted to give her every chance. For me, May changed how I approach these cases. I've been a veterinarian for over 10 years, so to say that there's a dog that changes the way I treat my future patients is pretty amazing. May is doing great. She didn't just survive, she's thriving. And that's because of everyone at Dub Lewis. They went above and beyond. They took care of her like she was theirs when we couldn't be there. It was more than we could have ever expected. This machine is very expensive and it requires a lot of training to be able to use. It requires maintenance. That's why many hospitals don't have it. It's actually quite rare. We rely on the generosity of our donors to help support this type of care for patients like May. Without Dove Lewis, May would not be alive. I think as much as Dove Lewis is an animal hospital, they take just as much care of us as they do of the dogs. They did take care of us. Yeah. Forever grateful.